Uh, so uh, we've got uh, FQ. Let's say this is the finite field with Q elements, which is some prime power. And um, uh, we have um, for uh, any FQ algebra for any ring uh, R, um, we have a Frobenius, an absolute Frobenius. Let's call it little f from R to R, which takes any element of R and, and raises it to the Q. And because we're in characteristic P, that's even a, a ring homomorphism. And then by gluing the f's together, uh, we have uh, for uh, x um, a scheme over FQ. Um, we have an absolute Frobenius F. So gluing the Fs um, gives an F for, for the, the X over FQ. And um, uh, let's make this map so that it, it's, it's over FQ, so that it leaves FQ the same. So the relative Frobenius is when um, On the, on the FQ, the FQ itself remains fixed. So we can pull back by the Frobenius and get a pullback. And then um, uh, uh, we can have, um, uh, well, this is the same as X. Um, uh, then we can get a, a map um, from X to itself that's going to be capital F by doing the um, absolute here and doing um, the, the projection here. But then this commutes because we were raising, um, raising everybody to the Q. So we get an induced map um, uh, like that. Um, so instead of uh, raising, raising the constants, we're just raising the variables to Q. Um, uh, and I think that's, that's all we, we want to say about that. And then in uh, 1949, um, solutions to the equations um, in uh, finite fields so those pairs, uh, tuples, x naught to the n um, and uh, fq to the m, satisfying diagonal equations, a naught, x naught to the e naught plus a n, x n, e n uh, uh, equals uh, b. Um, and uh, noticed a beautiful connection um, between the number of solutions over finite fields And what would happen if you let, um, if you took lifts of those a naught through a n and b's, um, and, and looked then at the solutions over c and the shape of the um, of the solutions in the complex points? Although the, the solutions over the finite fields could have very little to do with the solutions over the complex points. Instead, the 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 shape, the um, the holes in the in the complex points have uh, very much um, to do with the solutions over finite fields. Um, so the, the vague conjectures and the theorem of um, growth and Deek and, and Dwork and Galeen says that for x, smooth and proper, so SM for smooth, proper, like compact. Uh, that if we make a generating function 
out of the numbers of solutions over our finite fields um, then uh, this is a rational function uh, which is a, a, a characteristic um, polynomial for the action of Frobenius on a cohomology theory those ranks are the same as the Betty numbers of the of the complex points so this is d by dt log of a rational function p0 t p1 t um, p let's say it's dimension d smooth d dimensional p um, 2 dt p1 t p 2d uh, minus um, 1t, where these, um, where pi of t um, uh, um, uh, is the characteristic polynomial. Um, of the Frobenius with a, a cohomology theory um, uh, called a tall cohomology on the, the ith, a tall cohomology of, of x base change to the algebraic closure. We'll just um, and that the the degree of this polynomial, or the rank of the, the ith cohomology group, um, is the Betty number of the complex points. So as um, the, um, uh, it's, a, it's a product, as r goes from 1 to bixc, of 1 minus alpha i r um, uh, t. And this here is the zeta function. And um, uh, the Riemann hypothesis is that these um, roots, or these are the these are the reciprocal of the roots, so um, they have uh, absolute value q um, uh, to the to the i um, over, over 2. Um, uh, and there's a functional equation expressing the fact that um, the cohomology of uh, x um, is self-dual because smooth proper uh, varieties or manifolds are self-dual. Their duals are going to be twisted shifts of themselves, so the hi and the h2d minus i get related by that by that duality on on x, and so we'll um, we get if this is the zeta function zeta x of t um, says that zeta x one over q to the dt um, is related to zeta x of t. Um, and uh, um, it has to do with an, with an Euler characteristic and a t to the, um, you can call it out. I know at least one person in this room knows it by heart. Um, plus or minus uh, q, I mean, probably many more than one person, but uh, I was thinking of a ROM who must know it, but I'm not sure, maybe. Uh, so. Uh, this is uh, plus or minus q to the d chi over 2 t chi z, z um, zeta, zeta x of t. Um, uh, so uh, um, not only is this very beautiful, but it gets applied in many contexts. Um, the one that let's put on the board um, right now is uh, a, a recent one due to Ellenberg, Venkatesh, and West Westerland.
And what they do is they translate questions about class groups of function fields into questions about covers of a curve over a finite field, in particular over P1. So um, they look at various, so a Hurwitz space is a moduli space of branched covers over P1 where the Galois group is fixed. And there are a bunch of different, imagine there are a bunch of different Hurwitz spaces in um, Ellenberg, Venkatesh, with Westerlin's work. So we're gonna look at um, uh, the Vey conjectures for X Hurwitz spaces of branch covers of P1 And um, by the Vey conjectures, the 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 Betty numbers. This is the rank of the the ith cohomology group of uh, of X of, of the complex points are related to the um, the points over various finite fields, and these are giving. Um, uh, the FQ points of Hurwitz spaces are giving various branched covers. Um, and so stability results um, for in topology, they, they, they prove, purely topological, some stability results on these Betty numbers of these Hurwitz spaces. And this um, translates on the points of the finite field. Those have a modular, modular interpretation, and so what they show is that the Cohen-Lenstra heuristics, um, which are um, very famous, important heuristics on how the class group, um, uh, on the behavior of, of, of class groups of, of global fields, um, and so they, they, they show that, um, that they indeed hold in, in, in this case. So their theorem is uh, L odd prime, and you pick any finite abelian group A, um, as Q goes to infinity, we'll take Q not congruent to 1 mod L, um, and uh, um, we'll look at the, the, the density such that the uh, class group, um, uh, let's see, yeah, so the upper and lower uh, densities of quadratic extensions Um, of f q of t ramified at infinity such that their class group is A with the, the L part of their class group isomorphic to A. So actually, I want a, a finite abelian group A. So let's say L, a finite abelian L group, so well, it's orders of power of L, and then with the uh, L part of its class group isomorphic to A, the L part of the class group um, isomorphic to A does indeed, both of them converge to what is predicted by these beautiful cohen lenstra heuristics. So converge to, and you're supposed to measure the size of a group by one over its automorphisms, and then the, a sort of zeta e factor comes out on top, um, uh, one minus L to the I, as I goes from um, uh, one, one to an infinity. Um, and, and the vague conjectures get, get used uh, all the time. Um, uh, so, um, I think for the, the rest of this talk, we're gonna talk about the, the proof of rationality and duality in the, the context um, of, of A1 homotopy theory.
So the proof of rationality relies on an understanding of trace. Um, so let's talk about trace. So the, the rationality is this one. Here. So we're going to talk about that. And to do that, um, well, let's, let's talk about trace. So um, a symmetric monoidal category is a category with a tensor product um, such that there's an object one that whenever you tensor it with another object, it gets back to the original one. And A tensor B is isomorphic to B tensor A via a symmetry isomorphism tau. And then a dual of um, x in C is a dual object um, together with evaluation and co-evaluation maps, so such that there are equipped with um, uh, an evaluation map so we can pair x with its dual and get back to the unit. And um, we also have a co-evaluation map from 1 to dx tensor x, um, such that if you go from x to x tensor dual of x tensor x and back to x, and similarly for the dual of x, you get the identity. And this will allow us to move duals of x over sides of Homs. Um, so such that we go x to x tensor the dual of x, x with the co-evaluation and the um, identity on x, and then use the evaluation and the identity on x on the other side. Um, and similarly here, we get the identities on x and dual of x, respectively. Um, and uh, um, what this, well, one of the things that this implies, it's an exercise in Stephen McKean's um, uh, problem uh, session after, after the, the talk, is that um, the maps, there's a natural bijection between maps from x tensor y to z and uh, maps from y to the dual of x um, tensor z. Uh, and we expect um, uh, objects to be dualizable when they're finite enough, like vector spaces. Um, we can, uh, 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 we can do this um, maneuver for finite dimensional um, vector spaces. Um, so when X is dualizable, we have a trace. So for X in C, um, dualizable. with dual um, dx, um, the trace, and, and an endomorphism, let's use capital F, but any um, uh, map from, from x to itself, um, the trace of f um, inside the endomorphisms of 1 is the composition written on the next board.
the trace of f. They can go from 1 and then um, co-evaluate d of x cross x, and then do the identity on d of x and f on x, and then switch them, and then evaluate um, uh, giving, uh, giving a trace. Um, so uh, example one is for a finite um, x uh, finite dimensional uh, vector space um, uh, over k a field. And then the dual of x is Homs to k is the linear functionals on x. Um, so then um, uh, k to um, the dual of x tensor x, this takes 1 to uh, the sum of the dual basis. If you, if you chose a, a, a basis, um, it would be the sum of uh, um, e i star tensor e. Or you could say that the dual of x um, tensor x is Homs from x to x, because we know um, this is true in vector spaces, so there's an identity map sitting in here. So this corresponds to the identity map. And then we, we do f. And so then this goes to e i star tensor f of e i. Switching doesn't do anything here. Um, and then we go back to k by evaluating. Um, but then we see that this is, if we wrote um, f, as a matrix, f is a map of vector spaces, so it's linear. This is the component, the EI component of f of EI. In other words, it's the usual trace of the matrix. So it's the trace of f in the sense of matrices. So it's the sum over i of f um, i i. If, um, if, the, if this is its if matrix and the corresponding um, uh, basis. If instead we take chain complexes or um, a chain complex representing something in the derived category. An example two is, um, so let's look at uh, R, our commutative ring, and D perf of R um, uh, is a derived category of perfect complexes, like chain, um, uh, chain complexes of finitely generated um, projectives and um, uh, um, uh, quasi-isomorphisms or morphisms that induce isomorphisms on homology um, are uh, inverted. And so they behave um, much like uh, sequences of, uh, of vector spaces. Um, so let's, again, pick an endomorphism um, of uh, our object uh, C. And being um, it's a bounded uh, complex of finitely generated projectives, it is dualizable and the dual e to r. And in this case, this, um, this swap here does come in. What it does is it gives you the, the trace as an alternating sum of um, the, the, um, the traces on each of the ci in the, in the complex of f acting. Questions, comments? No? Um, Um, so here, the symmetry isomorphism says that um, the trace of f um, is going to be the, an alternating sum of the trace of f. And you can act on the cohomology, or if you've got a representative of all um, uh, finite rank um, frees, uh, you could do it on the ci. Each ci is like a vector space. You take the trace on each of the ci, and you multiply by appropriate minus 1 to the i. Um, and it, you, you can equally t well take the cohomology. Um, and so example 2 of a trace is um, an alternating sum of, 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 of those traces. Um, uh, example 3 um, is in stable homotopy theory. 
Um, so let's let spaces um, be an infinity category or uh, some sort of homotopy theory. And with a star, we'll be pointed. Um, and the, um, the tensor product is, is the smash product. So for two pointed spaces, we can take x cross y over x times a point union a point um, uh, times y. Um, uh, and um, we're going to make a lot of duals of smooth, proper things. And the duals are going to be in terms of Tom spaces. So for a vector bundle, let's let the Tom space of V, um, uh, we're going to, we'll make it a real vector bundle. So a bundle of real vector spaces um, uh, will be the projectivization of V plus a trivial bundle. So use O of X just to denote the trivial, but it's like a, it's just, it's just the rank one. However you want to do that, one, you know, we're topological. Um, trivial bundle of rank one over um, P of V, and this is um, the same as to putting a metric and taking the disk um, over the sphere or taking v over uh, v minus x. Um, uh, so um, when we take the Tom space of v plus a trivial bundle, we're crossing Um, uh, uh, with kind of an R in the numerator and an R minus the origin in the denominator, um, and um, uh, which is so if you take R cross X over R minus the origin cross X. This is the same as r over r minus the origin smash x plus. And um, uh, the, that first factor is the sphere. So what we get is that the um, adding a trivial bundle to O of x is taking s1 um, smash um, of the uh, tom uh, x of v. Um, so we'll use this to be able to make Tom spaces for virtual bundles, for differences of bundles. So let's make spectra. So unlike Mike's talk, SP is going to be spectra. And this will be spaces. Um, uh, it, it's possible um, to uh, invert um, smashing um, with uh, S1 uh, on the level of infinity categories and to even um, uh, remain uh, symmetric uh, monoidal. And um, uh, 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 in this context, we'll be able to represent cohomology theories and we'll also have uh, duals for our um, smooth, proper uh, objects. Um, uh, so um, we'll really be able to say that uh, a manifold is a as up to a twisted shift um, self dual, um, and then one. So we're still a symmetric monoidal category, and one is the sphere spectrum. Um, and uh, now we can take the Tom space of a negative of a bundle. So uh, let's say uh, then the way we do this, if we want to take a Tom space of negative V is we can choose a complementary bundle um, W so that um, this becomes a trivial bundle of, of rank N. And then that means that um, minus V is like W minus O of N um, in a group completion in K naught um, of X defined as the group completion 
of isomorphism classes um, of vector bundles on, on X. Um, uh, so um, we're going to let the Tom space of minus V be the shift down by N S ones of the Tom space of W. So we'll let the, and we can put an extra uh, V prime in there too. The Tom space of V prime minus V will be um, S one to the minus N with the Tom space of um, V prime plus W. And in this way, we can get a Tom space map from K naught of X um, to spectra. Um, okay. Uh, so um, in our, we're working on our third example, and we're going to get that manifolds um, uh, have have duals um, by uh, the the formula with the, the um, their Tom spaces. So let's also um, call purity um, when we have an embedding of closed manifolds, CX um, embedding of uh, closed. Um, manifolds. Um, then, the if we take the homotopy quotient of x over x minus c, then this is the Tom space over z of the normal bundle um, for uh, uh, z and x. Um, the picture being that if you took a small neighborhood, there's a tubular neighborhood of z inside x. Um, and so x over x minus c is the same as x over x minus its tubular neighborhood. But then here's a little disk in the normal bundle in red. And we crush everything around it. And that's the sphere. And so that's also um, that side. Um, uh, let's abbreviate to make some duals. We'll abbreviate the Tom space. Um, uh, XV, let's abbreviate that um, XV. And then for our smooth compact manifolds, they're dualizable and their dual is the Tom space of the minus tangent bundle. smooth, compact manifold, then x is dualizable and it's dual. Um, in fact, the dual of the Tom space for a, a vector bundle is x to the minus v uh, uh, minus tx. Um, and really, we, we made this stable. so. Um, uh, um, we're, we're the, a space itself wouldn't be um, dualizable in spaces. We had to make um, uh, spectra, and that puts an extra base point here. It's a special case where V is the zero vector, mm, vector bundle, the, the vector bundle of rank zero. Because if you quotient by the empty set, you get a plus disjoint base point. That's how that, that's how that one works. Um, uh, um, let's, let's sketch why this is really um, the, the dual. So let's construct the evaluation and co-evaluation maps. Um, so proof sketch. Um, we'll construct the evaluation. Um, so we've got xv. And we want to uh, tensor with x minus v um, minus uh, tx. Um, uh, so we can express this 
as a Tom space over x cross x, pi 1 will be the first projection, and we'll pull back v onto x um, uh, cross x, and we'll add um, the pullback under the second projection of minus v minus um, tx. Um, and we didn't leave ourselves enough room. How embarrassing. Uh, so we'll, we'll go up here. And then uh, the inside x cross x is the diagonal. And the diagonal is sitting there with its normal bundle isomorphic to the tangent bundle. So then we can quotient. Let's call this um, whole bundle here w. So we can quotient x cross x to the w by x cross x minus the diagonal to the w. Um, but then by purity, uh, this is the diagonal, um, which is isomorphic to x. So it's um, the Tom space of this normal bundle. But that normal bundle is the tangent space to x. Um, uh, plus um, uh, w pulled back to the diagonal. So I'll, I'll write that as w, but then um, when you pull w back to the diagonal, you get v minus v minus tx. So then since tx plus w is nothing, so then So then we have, um, well, well, here's better, w restricted to the diagonal, but then tx plus w restricted to the diagonal is uh, uh, tx plus v minus v minus tx, which is nothing. Um, so um, uh, then that's. Uh, the Tom space of the zero bundle, we were already discussing how that one is just x with a disjoint base point. We want to get all the way down to the sphere spectrum, and um, we can just map all of x to one point of S0. So S0 is two points, map everything in x to one of them, map the base point to the base point. Um, and that whole composite here Um, uh, is the evaluation map. So the, the money term is you take x cross x and you quotient to x cross x over x cross x minus the diagonal. Um, the um, the co-evaluation is going to be a composite of two maps. This is going to be a large sphere. And there's a Tom collapse map. Let's, let's actually, we'll take v equals 0 here. Um, and we'll draw the Tom collapse map um, uh, to, um, well, we're, we're about to say something about this, um, 2x to the uh, minus tx. And then for any uh, Tom space, there's a Tom diagonal. And we got to make sure the duals go on the wrong side, go on the right side, so that when we switch them, we're all dual on this side versus dual on that side. And so this is the, the um, Tom uh, diagonal. And for any Tom space xv, you could map by the identity, um, uh, the identity and the projection um, back onto x. And that's the Tom diagonal. And then the Tom collapse map is we'll embed x into a large sphere. And um, we'll take a tubular neighborhood. Uh, 
then um, it's a desuspension of Sn goes to Sn over uh, uh, Sn minus x. And on, on x, the S, x is compact. And so it's sitting actually in a Euclidean space. So the normal bundle is just minus its own tangent bundle, because the normal bundle is uh, trivial. So it's just the, the, the normal bundle here is the trivial bundle of rank n minus the tangent bundle. Um, so this is um, Sn x to the minus tangent bundle of x. Questions, comments, or corrections? OK. Um, uh, can, you, can you describe the map to S, to S naught? To the, what is the index of the S? It's, an, it's S naught, exactly. It's two points. And you, one of these goes to the non base point, and this goes to the base point. Okay. Yeah. Yes? If we don't consider pointed, sorry, what? Um, so that, that's um, uh, the um, you could put s naught into x plus. If you had a base point, you could go like this, and then you'd get x. And then the duals really will go dual, dual, dual. And the dual of S naught is S naught. So that's great. Um, uh, OK, so um, uh, we were going to do our third example of traces. And we're almost there. We got a whole bunch of dualizable things. And let's compute some traces on them. Their traces is the Lefschetz fixed point theorem. Uh, oh, you have to show that there's a perfect pairing here. So we're not really done. We're just declaring victory. Um, so the traces here are a sum over the fixed points of some index. So you know, if the indices were all one, it would be the number, the trace of an endomorphism of your smooth compact manifold is the number of fixed points. So our trace of some sort of f um, is, I mean, this is, this is a lie, but um, it's, uh, well, it's given by the Lefschetz fixed point theorem. Um, what, what's, I was going to, well, it's a sum over the x in uh, xf, so let xf be the points of x, which are fixed by f. And it's a sum of an index uh, at each of these points. And so this is a theorem. So this show perfect pairing was about claiming that um, a Tia duality really held, and that needs to be shown. And then the Lefschetz fixed point theorem computes the trace. X smooth compact manifold. And let's say F X to X has regular fixed points in the sense that um, it, it's going to induce a map on the normal bundle to your fixed points. And you want 1 minus that map to be an isomorphism. And um, then. Here's the trace. So let's show that it's a sum over something here. Let's show that it's really a sum over uh, the um, fixed points. Um, and this time, I'm going to plan ahead and make a lot of room for the diagram. Um, so let's, let's prove that the trace is counting up fixed points.
OK. So proof modulo that we didn't even define what the index was. Um, the, the trace of f is the composition Um, so we have to go from one. Let's instead go from that big SN that we embedded uh, X into. And then uh, we first wanted to do the Tom collapse map that was SN over SN minus X. Then we were going to do this um, uh, Tom diagonal, which was this SN over SN minus X, X plus, which is the same as taking Sn cross x um, over Sn minus x uh, cross um, uh, x. So there we are. We've just done our, um, our uh, co-evaluation. And now we have to put x on the, I mean f. Now we, we go f on this factor. So 1 on the Sn factor and f on this factor. And we wind up here. Um, and uh, uh, um, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to uh, just sweep the, the swaps uh, under the rug. But now what we want to do is we want to take, um, uh, we want to quotient, um, quotient by the complement of the diagonal. So if, um, if here is Sn and here is x, we have Sn cross x. Here's x inside of there. Um, so here's x cross x. We took out all of x cross x in here. So uh, we took this out and quotiented by its complement. And now instead, we're going to um, to do um, the evaluation map. We'll do Sn cross x over Sn um, cross x, now minus the diagonal of x. Here's the diagonal of x. So we're quotienting out some more things. And heck, any time f was not hitting itself, any, for any of these points x, such that f of x wasn't equal to x, you just got sent to the base point. So this map factors. So now we go, so here's x cross x. And now we just do this. Um, uh, like so. And then um, purity um, gets us down to Sn um, uh, x plus um, uh, Um, uh, and then, uh, which will get us, get us down to Sn. But then, the composite from here all the way down to here factors not only through Sn minus x, but through Sn over Sn minus, minus Fx. And therefore, that map is a sum over the fixed points, because this is a wedge. OK. Um, so if you define the indices to be the um, pieces of that wedge sum and, then, then we've seen that the uh, trace is a sum over the fixed points of some sort of, of, some sort of index. Um, OK. So example four, still for traces, is let's questions. No, OK, yeah. Um, is, is to do the same thing in A1 homotopy theory. So. Um, We've been discussing A1 homotopy theory for a week. I haven't, um, I wish I had been here. Um, I have a large family um, who wishes I were not here right now. So it's just a, it's a compromise. Um, uh, but let's, the, the same story works in, um, in A1 homotopy theory.
So example four for traces. Do I really only have, ah. so I've got seven minutes, huh? Eight or nine, okay. All right. All right. So um, uh, the example four is, um, uh, let's do a one homotopy theory. And we'll take some sort of base scheme. It could just be spec of a field. And um, let's assume it's quasi-compact and um, quasi-separated. And then inside, um, uh, well, we look at smooth schemes over B. And we take presheaves of simplicial sets or in some sort of um, infinity uh, category of spaces. And on smooth B schemes, there's an Isnevich topology. So we can talk about sheaves. And inside here, um, we can look at, um, this was Mike's spaces from this morning, but let's call it SBC. Um, so these are the spaces in A1 homotopy theory. Um, which are A1 invariant um, Nisnevich um, sheaves. Um, and now, um, if we take the, um, the Tom space of O of X, what we get, it's just the base scheme. It could be K. It's the base, the, the base scheme, like C from this morning. Like it could be over the complex number. Um, it could be the complex numbers. Um, so, but now the, the Tom space, if you take some smooth uh, B scheme X, and you take the Tom space of O of X, you get P1 cross X over GM A1 uh, for the trivial vector bundle cross X. And you could make this P1 cross X over A1 cross X. And then A1 is contractible, so you could put this at an infinity, P1 cross X. So instead of smashing with S1, we smash um, with P1. So we let um, SH of B be a symmetric monoidal um, infinity category formed by um, uh, inverting, smashing with P1, um, uh, and it's still symmetric mono uh, monoidal, and Robalo's thesis um, gives a, um, a universal property for it. And then our, the example with the left shuts fixed point theorem uh, holds similarly. So by um, work of Hu, Ryu, um, Vavadsky, um, uh, Hoywa, Levine, uh, De Glees, Ostfair, um, De Boulez, um, there we have a lot of duality results. And in particular, the, the proof we just sketched works. So for K of field, let's take X smooth proper over K um, via vector bundle. Uh, then the dual, then X to the V is dualizable and its dual is x to the minus v uh, minus um, tx. The um, epsilon is same as before. Uh, the tom diagonal is same as before. Um, uh, for the, the tom collapse, x to the minus tx is contravariant in um, Inclusions. So for the Tom collapse, um, the formation of x minus tx is contravariant in x. Um, so if we have z into x, we can do x to the minus tx. And then we'll go to x 
to the minus tx over x minus z to the minus tx. But then by purity, um, this is z to the normal bundle of z, which is tx minus tz minus tx, which is z to the minus tx. So it suffices to construct the Tom collapse for projective space. Projective space, and Vavodsky does this, and um, it's in, in an article of Mark Levine, um, uh, too. And um, uh, then Mark Hoywa makes a beautiful generalization of the Lefschetz fixed point theorem. So now, if we're um, Hoywa, So if we have x um, smooth and proper over a field, in fact, it can actually be over b, um, uh, then um, the, the same uh, thing holds. Um, uh, and we have a sum over fixed points. There's a very short proof of the rationality of zeta using all of this. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, but everyone is tired. Um, uh, so you know what? Um, let's, let's call it quits there. And we are just going to take all of these ingredients, so let's not forget them, and, and very quickly do rationality of zeta and then a, a generalization next time. Thank you.